McDonald, and I am beyond thrilled to welcome you to the very first episode of our extra special series, Cooking on the Clock. It's brought to you by Grace Foods. So this is where we're gonna journey together in the kitchen every single week to explore the incredible and magical world of plant-based cooking. And the best part is we're gonna be doing it on the clock. After being a coach in the wellness and fitness space for the last 11 years, I've realized that there's such a big gap in truly understanding the value and the power of eating real food. When we nourish our bodies with plant-based goodness, we get rewarded with just vibrant health and happiness and we have so much more energy and clarity and great immune systems and almost always left feeling in a good mood. That's what good food does for you. And that's why I'll be sharing brand new recipes, cooking techniques, health and nutrition tips and tricks each week so you can eat high vitality, anti-inflammatory, energy enhancing and digestive friendly foods around the clock, on the clock. I'm gonna be with you twice a week, every week, first to prep our foundation ingredients because you're soon gonna learn that there is no cooking on the clock without prepping your ingredients first. And then we'll meet again after we're all prepped up, we'll set up our timers and whip up some of my favorite mouth-watering, nutritious, plant-based meals that will satisfy you and your tummies, even if you're not vegan or vegetarian. More importantly, we will be putting things in place so that no matter how busy you are, you can consistently cook on the clock and get the most out of your kitchen, your produce, your time, and your entire life. Today, we're kicking off with meal prep, but first, it's the recipe reveal. And of course, we just have to kick our series off with an extra special recipe. It's a rendition of one that my mother actually passed on to me years ago when I just started my own plant-based journey. It's my go-to when I'm short on time, when I only have a few ingredients. Um, it's delicious, very versatile. It's a staple in my weekly lineup of meals, and it is the most delicious creamy coconut curry chickpeas. And this week we're gonna pair it with a quinoa kale avocado salad. Are you ready? Let's get prepping. All right, so for our coconut curry chickpeas, we're gonna be using, of course, chickpeas dried from Grace Foods. We are gonna be using coconut milk from Grace Foods and also the curry powder from Grace Foods. Uh, we're gonna be seasoning it up with onion, garlic, ginger, scotch bonnet, that is what we're using for the chickpeas. So very simple ingredients, little bit of pink Himalayan salt and black pepper. And we have a secret ingredient today, ladies and gentlemen, and that is honey. We're gonna be adding honey to our curry, all right? So we are also pairing it with a kale quinoa salad. It's avocados, kale. We're gonna get lots of bell peppers in the mix. We're also gonna be using black beans for that salad and mango. All right, so it's gonna be delicious. We're gonna be making our own salad dressing, which I recommend to do every single week. And it's gonna be quick, it's gonna be easy, it's gonna be delicious. You ready? Let's go. So the first thing we're gonna do is to soak our chickpeas and our black beans. I know, I know, don't give me that look. It's not that hard. Um, in fact, it's quite easy. And of course, canned beans are a great pantry staple to have on hand, but I find that you get so much more bang for your buck by cooking your own beans. I enjoy the taste so much more, and it also helps to keep your sodium in check, right? Um, all legumes in general are such an excellent source of protein. They're very low in fat. They don't have cholesterol. There's no saturated fat. They are one of the most inexpensive plant-based proteins around. They're super great to freeze once we cook them up. Um, you can add them to salads, to smoothies, to really kick your fiber game up. So there are two main ways to soak your dried beans. You have the long soak method. It's a great time saver because it just involves putting the beans in a container with three times the amount of water, leaving them overnight, making sure they're fully submerged, um, making sure you're also leaving some space because they're going to triple in size overnight. You're gonna leave them soaking for about eight to 12 hours at room temperature. And then when you wake up in the morning, ta-da! You have your soaked beans ready to cook. So you'll just rinse them off in cold water, put them in a pot with fresh water for cooking. I like to personally use uh, spices, you know, natural spices when I'm soaking my beans. So I like to add um, bay leaf, I like to add, add ginger and garlic. 
So for the quick soak method, all you're gonna do is add two cups of dried beans to 10 cups. So again, that ratio is five cups of water for every one cup of beans. You're gonna turn the flame on high to begin with, bring it to a boil, and then cover it, remove it from the stove altogether and let it soak for an hour. Then you're gonna drain and rinse the beans. Uh, rinse the pot out, there's gonna be lots of foam at the top, you're gonna remove that, rinse it out nicely, and then uh, put it back on the stove to cook. Bring it to a boil, cover it with water, bring that to a simmer, and then that usually takes about an hour to cook. So if you forgot to soak your beans overnight, no worries, there's that quick soak method can have you in and out in about two hours from soaking to cooking. All right, so now we are gonna prep the rest of the ingredients while this is quick cooking. As we take this plant-based journey together each week, you will soon learn that meal prep is all about multitasking. So we're gonna continue our prep with one of my all-time favorite grains that's actually a seed. It's a complete source of protein, it's high in iron, magnesium, and it's incredibly easy to cook. And that is quinoa. So first, I want you to rinse the quinoa thoroughly in a fine mesh strainer, then drain it. Then you're gonna heat one tablespoon of olive oil to a saucepan over medium heat, and then add the drained quinoa, and I want you to toast it for about two minutes. Make sure you're stirring it constantly. The ratio I use for perfectly fluffy quinoa is one cup of quinoa to one and three quarter cups of liquid. For the most flavorful quinoa, I like to use low sodium vegetable broth. So add your veggie broth to the pot and bring it to a boil. Once it's boiling, lower the heat to the lowest setting, cover the pot and let it cook for 15 minutes. I like to let it stand covered for five minutes after it's finished. And then I remove it from the heat and after a few minutes, I uncover it and fluff it with a fork. So now let's chop up our onions or garlic, ginger, or three colors of bell peppers. Wash and chop your kale and then massage it with olive oil and a little bit of sea salt. And there you have it, all of our ingredients beautifully prepped up, ready for us to cook on the clock. We have some delicious massage kale. We have onions, if you notice, I've prepped up much more than necessary for this one meal because we're gonna be using this throughout the week. We have our pumpkin seeds, we have our diced mango, we have our ginger and our garlic diced, we have all of our bell peppers, we have the quick soak and cooked chickpeas here ready for us. We also have our cooked quinoa. Also, we made much more than needed for this one meal because again, we're gonna be using it in various different capacities. And we also still have our overnight black beans and chickpeas, which we'll also use for various different meals, all right? So I want you to gather all your ingredients, get them prepped up, and I'll see you when we're ready to cook on the clock.